Built along the banks of the Rimac River, Lima is both Peru's largest city and its capital. Founded in 1535 by the conquistador Francisco Pizarro, Lima was used as the headquarters of the Spanish conquistadors. Ideally situated upon the fertile plain irrigated by the Rimac River, Lima lies in close proximity to the natural port of Cayo. The atmosphere that surrounds the city of Lima is slightly dreamlike, mostly because of the Garua, a mist that settles over the city between May and October. Rebuilt several times, Lima reflects the dominant architectural styles of several distinct historical eras. Although many streets are narrow and preserve a colonial atmosphere, spacious boulevards traverse much of the metropolitan area, and much of the city is characterized by modern steel and concrete buildings. The hill of Cerro San Cristobal rises 500 meters above sea level. From there, the visitor can contemplate an incomparable landscape, the modern city with its tall buildings, the river Rimac as it flows through the city, as well as the asphalt roads that lead to the resorts and towns along the coast. Built upon the banks of the Rimac River and caressed by the waters of the Pacific Ocean, the city of Lima preserves important traces of its pre-Columbian history. Lima is a huge metropolis of over 8 million people, spreading as far as the eye can see. Covering over 300 square miles, with few tall buildings, it gives new meaning to the word urban sprawl. Following a series of terrorist incidents that ravaged the countryside, nearly two-thirds of Peru's population migrated to Lima, creating a poverty belt that surrounds the city proper. Lima's Cathedral and the Palace of the Archbishop are located on the Plaza Mayor, or Main Square. The facade of the Archbishop's Palace is composed of Baroque elements, completely built of stone. Ornate balconies of carved cedar wood grace the area over the main doors. Lima's Cathedral is an immense Baroque church originally built in 1564. The first stone of the cathedral was laid by Francisco Pizarro, the Spanish conquistador who defeated the Inca. Ironically, Pizarro would be laid to rest in the same cathedral less than 10 years later, after he was murdered in the streets of Lima, a victim of the brutal warring among Spanish factions that followed the fall of the Incas. The cathedral's main door is called the Portada del Perdón, or the Door of Forgiveness. Lima's Cathedral is a Roman Catholic church originally dedicated to the Assumption of the Virgin. It is composed of three central naves, each of which rises 21 meters high, and two smaller side naves housing the church's many chapels. There are 15 smaller chapels within the larger cathedral structure, each of which is dedicated to a different saint or religious figure. Lima's cathedral has been damaged by many earthquakes throughout its history. Its original vaults were destroyed in 1609, to be rebuilt in 1615, smaller and in the Gothic style. Another earthquake destroyed the cathedral's vaults in 1687, and its vaults and pillars were severely damaged by yet another earthquake in 1746. Rebuilt in 1758, it stood intact for almost 200 years, until an earthquake in 1940 caused more limited damage. 
Restoration work was carried out that same year. Lima's Cathedral is renowned for the intricately carved wooden seats of its choir. Skulls and tombstones can be found in the cathedral's crypt. The cathedral also houses the Museo de Arte Religioso, or Museum of Religious Art, with its collection of liturgical objects, including chalices and chasubles, sculptures, as well as 17th and 18th century paintings from the schools of Lima, Cusco, and Ayacucho. Among its collection of liturgical objects are included ceremonial chasubles worn by priests to celebrate the various church feasts. Extremely ornate, they are embellished with golden and silver embroidery and precious stones. Our Lady of Mercy Church and Convent was built by the Religious Order of the Mercedaries. Construction on this important example of colonial architecture was begun in 1536. The church's ornate granite facade was carved in 1687. The beautiful colonial facade, the church's most elegant feature, has been adapted and rebuilt several times. The neoclassical main altar in the church's interior is particularly noteworthy. The image above it depicts the Mercedaria Virgin, which was designated Patron Saint of the Army by the Constitutional Assembly in 1823. La Merced also houses one of Lima's most impressive collections of colonial paintings and sculptures. The Franciscan Monastery and Church is one of Lima's most spectacular colonial-era buildings. Consecrated in 1673, it was one of Lima's few major edifices to survive the earthquakes of 1687 and 1746. Much of the building has been restored to its original Baroque style in a striking combination of yellow and white. The church with its impressive main portal, affiliated convent, along with the square on which it stands and its two churches of El Milagro and La Soledad, together form possibly the most successful and impressive complex of colonial architecture in all of Latin America. The impressive carved portal became the model for other churches in Lima. On the facade, an open cornice with arches houses an image of the Immaculate Conception. The church's main facade is in carved stone with Corinthian columns. The Portuguese architect Constantino de Vosconcelos, who lived in Lima, was entrusted with the task of rebuilding the complex, 
generally known as the Convent of San Francisco, which now comprises the churches of San Francisco, along with the recently restored La Soledad and El Milagro chapels. San Martin Square was inaugurated in 1921 on the centennial of Peru's independence. In its center stands an impressive equestrian monument honoring General José de San Martin, the Argentine liberator of Peru, shown ascending the Andes. The figure of the woman in front representing liberty was the creation of the Catalan sculptor Don Mariano Benuire. Larger and more open than the Plaza Mayor, the Plaza San Martín is frequently the site of demonstrations. It is surrounded by buildings constructed in the colonial style, including hotels and a theater. The Plaza San Martín has witnessed most of Lima's political rallies of the past century, and it is not unusual to see rioting office workers with attendant police armed with water cannons and tear gas. Ideologically speaking, the Plaza San Martín represents the sophisticated, egalitarian and European intellectual liberators represented by San Martín himself, though it remains part of the world of business. The Baroque Church of St. Peter was inaugurated on July 31, 1638, under the name San Pablo, or St. Paul. It was later rechristened with its present name after the Jesuit order was expelled from the Spanish colonies in 1767. The church's facade incorporates both Renaissance and neoclassical elements, including double cornices and Roman pilasters crowned by Doric capitals. The facade also presents a Greek frontin with three sacred images. The church has preserved its original bell, La Boilita, the oldest bell in Peru. The church's three doors correspond to each of its three naves. The central nave, kept by a semi-spherical dome, is the tallest. The incredibly ornate interior of the church stands in stark contrast to its simple exterior. The interior is decorated with gilded altars, carvings in the Moorish style, and abundance of beautiful glazed tile work. The chapels lining the lateral naves are vaulted. Gorgeous altarpieces adorn the chapel's altars while their lateral walls display a series of paintings depicting scenes from the life and works of St. Peter, the church's patron. The interior is a triumph of highly ornate Baroque decoration. Altars, walls, vaulting and pillars disappear beneath a forest of 17th and 18th century gilded wood, carved to represent religious images. The great majority of Lima's churches and convents have suffered restorations and modifications since their original construction, mainly to repair the destruction caused by earthquakes. Mostly built during the 17th century, Lima's religious monuments represent a unique coexistence 
of the extremely flamboyant Churriguereske style with the severe lines of the Spanish Renaissance. The exquisite sacristy has wide windows and contains an important collection of paintings. Lima is a metropolis of almost 9 million people who proudly preserve the city's colonial convents and mansions as symbols of their ancient and noble past. Adorning the buildings of Lima's historical center are more than 1,600 balconies dating from the eras of the Viceroy and the Republic. In order to aid in their preservation, the city of Lima has invited individuals and companies to adopt a balcony. The Ozambela Palace was built between 1803 and 1805, though it was not officially finished until 1807. It has five balconies and a mirador. Not far from the Ozambela Palace stands the Church of Our Lady of the Rosary, the original name of the Church of Santo Domingo, which was elevated to the status of Basilica in 1930. The abundance of these balconies adds to this neighborhood's particular charm. To stroll through Lima's streets is to be swept away into the past. During colonial times, each block had a different name. Here, the Mercado Indio, or Indian Market, specializes in local crafts. Bargains can be found if one is shopping for fine woolen clothing, carved wood, tooled leather cushions, stools, silver jewelry, or other craft items. Beyond the purely tangible, something in Lima's atmosphere elicits an instinctual reaction that is a combination of surprise, fascination, and awe. Beyond the unique atmosphere one finds in the small streets of the colonial city, Lima is composed of 22 districts and almost 9 million inhabitants, making it one of Latin America's biggest cities, as well as Peru's financial and political center. Here is the Palace of Torre Tagle, one of Lima's most important mansions from the beginning of the 18th century. It originally belonged to Don Jose Bernardo of Tagle Porto Carrero, the fourth and last Marquis of Torre Tagle. The two balconies that embellish its sculpted stone facade are considered one of the most precious gems of Lima's architecture. One has been perfectly preserved.
The interior of Lima's mansions traditionally housed a porch and patio in the distinctive style of Spanish Andalusia, although some of the intricate carved wood pillars and ceilings display a native influence. The azulejos, or tiling, also shows a strong fusion of styles, in this case a combination of Moorish and Limeño. The Church of St. Augustine stands at the intersection of Ica and Camana streets. Built in 1574, it boasts a portal in the Cheriguereske style, made entirely of sculpted stone. The heart of the old town is the Plaza Mayor, until recently known as the Plaza de Armas, or Armed Plaza, as the early conquistadores called it. There are no remains of any Indian heritage in or around the square. The Plaza Mayor was the site of Peru's Declaration of Independence in 1821. The water fountain, which remains the plaza's focal point to this day, was inaugurated in 1651. This is the spot where Francisco Pizarro founded the city in 1535. Lima's first name was the City of the Kings because it was officially founded on January 6, the Feast of the Epiphany, when the three kings came to adore the Christ child. This name quickly fell into disuse as Lima became the preferred name for the city. It is uncertain where this name originated. It may derive from the Quechan word rimac, or talking, pronounced in the ancient Quechan manner. Many speculate that the Spanish name Lima represents an attempt to pronounce the Quechan word Rimac, which they must have heard from the indigenous population. Both in and near the city, resorts and beaches dot the coast of the Pacific Ocean. The coastal area with its sandy and pebble beaches is lined by high green cliffs. The green color of the ocean's water comes from the significant quantity of plankton it contains. With areas of both calm water perfect for swimming and others with powerful waves ideal for surfing, Lima's beaches have something for everyone. At night, a magical quality descends upon Peru's capital city, with its splendid colonial monuments beautifully illuminated under the nocturnal silence. The Parque de la Reserva was inaugurated in May 2007 by Lima's mayor, Luis Castañeda, with its beautiful fountains of plain water, colored lights and laser rays that dance in time to music. This newly revamped park is the pride of Lima's citizens. The park's magical water tour is presently the largest fountain complex in the world, 
Its 13 distinct fountains, many of them interactive, are illuminated at night, some with continuously changing color schemes. An exhibit about the city is open at night during the light shows. The Fountain Tunnel is one of the park's most popular attractions. The City of the Kings, as Lima was first known, was, until the middle of the 18th century, the capital and most important city of the Spanish Dominions in South America. With its extensive and well-preserved core of colonial architecture, Lima's historical center was named a UNESCO World Cultural Heritage Site in 1991.